have been blessed by the Tuesday teaching series. All right? Do you not know how to use Psalms to pray? Uh, so we say, I didn't know that this is how to use Psalms. All right? Because, you see, we just read through Psalms. We read through Psalms. We read through Psalms, you know? But by the time we even thought on um, how to, when you, when you open the book of Psalms, you, def- you determine the genre that you are reading. If I have not finished Psalms, really, because uh, what, I, what I touched was um, the Lamentation Psalms, how to use Psalms for prayer, but I've not actually thought on how to use Psalms for effective thanksgiving, because there's also a way you break it down. But, you know, we can't exhaust everything at a, at a stretch. So this month is special because what I'm teaching in this month is going to be uh, something that is the last phase in our membership model. So what does that mean? So you are going to know everything that you need to know about the church. Why do we come to church? Should we come to church? What, do we, what is the essence of the church? Why do we need a church anyway? What role do you have to play in the church? All right. How, where are we going? You know, when you come to church week in, week out, where is this church going? Some of us don't know those questions, or you know those questions, but you don't know the answer. If somebody should stop you on the way and say, what is your belief system in your church? What is the doctrine of your church? What do you believe? Where, where is your church going? What, why is your church different from every other church? What makes your church stand out? All right? What is the mission of your church? What are the core values of your church? Most of us don't know those questions. All right? Or we know those questions, but we do not know the answers. Well, congratulations if you made it through this month because all those questions and answers will be preferred, properly dealt with this month. Now, what does that mean? It means from the month of July, in fact, second um, of July, first Sunday of July, then we'll be transitioning to the new phase. All right, we'll be transitioning to the new phase, um, which I will let you know more about later. But quickly this morning, um, today is Thanksgiving Sunday, amen? So I would like you to open to one of the Thanksgiving Psalms, Psalm 92, as we all read from verse 1 to 5. When I read verse 1, you read verse 2. When I read verse 3, you read verse 4. Then together we'll read verse 5 together. All right. Those of you who are joining from, the, from your home, from the comfort of your house, I want to also welcome you because you are going to be in for a great time. The Lord is ministering to you and touching you wherever you are in the name of Jesus. So I will read it with Psalm 92 verse 1. Psalm 92 verse 1. You remember I read verse 1. You do what? You read verse 2. Then I read verse 3. You will do what? Then we'll... Then we we'll all read verse 5 together. So can we have Psalm 92 verse 1? Everybody, are you ready now? Psalm 92 verse 1. I'm reading now. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the subtree, upon the harp with a solemn sound. Verse 5 together, one to go. And thy thoughts are what? Wonderful. Now, when you read verse 2, it said, To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every what? Every night. Then he went on to then say, Oh Lord, how great thy, are thy works. Oh Lord, how great are thy works. And thy thoughts are very what? Deep. But I love what verse 6 says. Can we read verse 6? Let's go to verse 6. A brutish man knoweth not, neither a fool understand this. Now, from verse 1 to 5, if, if, let's just take these verses in the context of verse 5. He said, O oh Lord, how great thy work are thy words, and thy thoughts are very deep. Then he now said in verse 6, a brutish man does not understand that, does not know that. A brutish man does not know that the works of the Lord are great and his thoughts are very deep. Now, the first thing I want you to know about thanksgiving, why we must learn to thank God, is what verse 1 says, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Now, 
I was sharing with um, Lady P yesterday night. And I said to them, when the Bible says, surely goodness. Goodness is an harvest. Doing good is a seed. In other words, when the Bible says that goodness and mercy shall follow me, it simply means that that person has sown the seed of good things. Goodness is an harvest. Doing good is the seed. So for you to experience the followership of goodness, it means you have intentionally what? Sown good seed. If you don't sow good seed, you cannot reap the harvest of what? Goodness. So if somebody say, oh, things are not going the way it ought to go around my life. You know, I'm not experiencing the goodness of God. What you need to tell the person is that, have you sown good seed? Because you see, the Bible says, be not mocked or be not deceived. Whatsoever a man sows, he shall what? Reap. If you don't sow good seed, you cannot reap goodness. You cannot reap the goodness of God without you sowing good seed. So when the Bible says, goodness and mercy shall follow me, what is it that is making goodness to follow? Because the person is sowing good seed. Now, one of the good seed is giving. Now, when you look at the way Psalm 92 verse 1 put it, it says, it is a good thing to give. Pause there first. So giving is always a good thing. When you give, you know, you have done something good. You know, I, I, I shared a testimony with my team, uh, my prayer team, during the week. But you know, as I was preparing for this meeting, because the Lord surprised me with something marvelous. I, I, I witnessed the deliverance of God from a major financial need that has been there that I was not able to solve for almost one year. And as the deadline drew near, which was supposed to be July, you know, I was not thinking about it anymore because, you know, when you have done all that you need to do and it's like something is not, um, you're not seeing answer, just trust God and be there. So, I, honestly speaking, I, I just knew that God was going to make a way. But um, as a deadline due, which was supposed to be next month, this huge financial obligation that I need to settle, I don't even know where it's going to come from. So, um, so I, when the Lord made a way for me, I shared it with my team. But all of a sudden, yesterday night, the Lord drew my attention to something I did the week before that breakthrough came. One of my very close friends, who is also a pastor, my childhood friend, all right, just put a call through to me. I said, John, he used to call me Pastor Jay. Pastor Jay, I need, he's a severe, all right. He said, see, there is this equipment that severe need that I need to acquire running into huge amount of money. And I just saw it on sale on this platform. I'm expecting money in about some weeks, but I need to tie that thing down with a deposit today. And I need, and he mentioned the amount he needed. Now, remember that me too, I'm looking for money. I don't have that money with, it, with me. So when he asked me, I weighed what I needed and what he needed. And I told him, I said, Honestly speaking, I don't have this money now. But however, you know, I, I have never borrowed money on uh, my mobile app, which was the GT1. I said, but because of you, I can do this. Because I actually know what it means to want to tie something down. Because this has to do with your business and your career. You know, what me I needed, you know, it's not that going to affect my career like that. So... And he said, thank you. So for the first time, I opened my GT app. I, you know, because I've never borrowed money there before. They, they bought. So because of him, I went and I borrowed that money on that platform. Now, when I was going to do that, different thoughts came to my mind. What if he doesn't pay back? Are you a fool? Why will you go this extra mile for somebody? What if this happened? What did that happen? Then I remember that somebody borrowed money from this. Uh, somebody did something similar for someone and the, and the person did not pay back and in fact the person came to report to me this word and i had to pray with the person some week ago 
So I saw the thought came, ah, you remember that this was one person came to, to, you are going to put yourself in trouble and every, you know, different thoughts. So I said, well, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain what? Mercy. Even if he doesn't pay back, God, <laughs> I will learn from it. So I, I took the money and I sent everything to him. And he sent me a message. Thank you. Only few friends can actually... I realized when I needed this money that I had only few friends that can stand with you when it comes to things like this. And he's a, he's a man of God. So he thanked me. Some weeks later of the truth, he paid the money back. But you know, I just realized that I did that a week or so earlier. Then me... What I have been believing God for for almost one year, right? Then God also then made a way for me that the, the financial obligation was miraculously solved within one week. I'm telling you, as in solved to the last cup, to the last, you know, thing. The, the obligation was taken away from me. So me, I, I, my mind never went there. I will never have thought about that. I, I never married the two together. Until yesterday when I was praying, then it occurred to me that the Lord said, the Lord showed me mercy because I showed somebody else mercy in the hour of need. I said, you know, I was shocked. Because me, I was thinking, because we've been doing fasting every week for, you know, and it's been intensive marathon fast for about, since April, we do about three days. So I was thinking, oh, it was the prayer, you know, the Lord just brought it to my mind and I believed him. So remember that, give him, in the seventh verse, I, I said, stop in Psalm 92, verse 1 first. He said, it, it, it's a good thing to what? Give. So anytime you decide to give, oh, who is there? Verse 1. Eh? Verse 1, please. That's what I said. Just put a full stop first or a semicolon. It is a good thing to give. See, when you are a giver, you activate goodness. You activate mercy. And that is why you see one of the greatest attacks that will also come upon your life, the devil will attack you with, when you have a generous spirit, is to attack you by sending unfaithful people who will discourage you from continuing on that line. So the devil will, that's why a lot of you who are very generous, you see that there have been people who have been unfaithful. You will help this person, they will repay you. But it's not about them. It's about the fact that the devil is after that your heart. That is why you must guard your giving and your generous heart with all diligence. Because it's a good thing you are doing. It is a good thing you are doing. I'm telling you. One day, um, I did something for someone who was in need. And I told my wife, I said, do you know what I'm doing? One of the things, why I like doing this thing. Because I know what it means to be in need and be helpless. And I also know what it means to be helpless. And God just made a way for you. It's not a good thing to be helpless. Because you are in that situation, you don't know what to do. And you are just there looking at it. Are you with me? So it's a good thing to give. Tell your neighbor it's a good thing to give. Said, and don't let anything damage, hinder, or change your giving heart. That is what I'm telling you. Don't let anything. It is a good thing to give. Now, we cannot give God shoe. We cannot give God clothes. But God wants us to give also to him. We cannot give God um, fufu. We can't give him jollof rice. We can't give him fried rice. He doesn't eat all those things. So, but God also wants us to what? Give to him. He wants us to give to him. He wants us to give to him. He said, I, want, I too want to enjoy what your generosity. God loves generous people. And he also wants us to be generous to him. And... Um, so David realized that what the first thing you can give, one of the first things you can give to God that he wants, even before material things, is gratitude. That is why I say it is a good thing to give 
thanks. So any time you are giving thanks, you are showing generosity to God. You are giving to God. Is the communication of a gift. You are gratitude is the presentation. When you are expressing gratitude to God, what you are doing is that you have come with a gift to Him. It's an offering. 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 It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Good thing to give thanks. To be a grateful person to God is a very good thing. Never take it for granted. Now, you will then see something. I like verses. He said, a brutish man does not know this. Give me back this. A brutish man does not know this. Know it not this fact that it's good to give thanks. To acknowledge the good works of God. A brutish man does not understand why you need to wake up and start praising God. Then I decided to go and check the origin of that word brutish. Because it sounds British. <laughs> so I wanted to know what is the word, what is the etymology of this word? What is, and it, it, it brutish is from the word brute itself. B-R-U-T-E. Brute. And it's an archaic word that is used for stupidity. One of the meaning, and it's actually used in reference to animals. That when they look at any animal that is big but unintelligent. Big, unintelligent, or any animal that lacks intelligence. They call it, <laughs> that animal is a brute. Oh, see a brute, a brute. When, you know the word, animals that behave foolishly, stupidly, exhibit lack of intelligence. When it comes to, cannot reason well, cannot reason deeply. And you realize that most animals are like that. Most animals, the difference between an animal and a human being is that the animals actually think. I don't know whether you have had some intelligent rats in your house before. There, 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 there was a particular rat that if not for the wisdom of God, you put all the poison, the rat knows the poison, it will not eat it. And kept harassing my house and moving. And he's raising family. The husband and the wife were in my house. This, uh, they were raising a family. I, I know he's in the, off, in the church office here. They were raising family. And I start seeing children who were not paying house rents. They were moving all around the place. I said, oh, this, there's a rat here who have rented this office without paying. What is going on? So, so, part, so that particular week, I said, I must get rid of this rat. So I put the rat gum put the rat poison, this rat had a family meeting, they, he told the friend family, don't go here, don't go here, don't eat this, don't eat that. Because all, with all the poison, nothing happened. Then the place they used to pass, I put the rat gum there. You will not believe that this rat, the rat gum caught the rat. Then the rat fought its way out of the rat gum. So I knew I'm in the trouble here. Because this rat now understood the power of the rat gun. So, I, I still let the rat gun there. Then you will see that the rat has a way of passing over. But the rat would not enter the rat gun. So, I said, okay. Okay. So, now, I left it there for some week to program the mind of the rats. Brutish. I'm explaining brutish. Brutish. That's the word. So I, I did remove the rat gum. And I said, I will show you that. I'm not. So there is the law of adaptation. The law of adaptation means that every animal adapts to a particular scene after some time or a particular situation. So they, they develop, you know, kind of um, humility or whatever it is. So I had to apply. The, it did not go to school. It was only an, it did not think deeply. So I, I applied the principle of adaptation. I said, if I leave this rat gum here, and that this rat gum have caught this thing and he has escaped. After some time by seeing it, all of them will have family meeting and they will change their route or something like that. So I left it there. I left it there. Then, after about three or four days, when I was leaving the office, I put the rat gum in another route that looks like this. I didn't change anything. By the time I came, the entire family, the father, the mother, the children, all of them were on the rat gum. Yeah, all of them were on the rat gum. I'm telling you. Wisdom. You see, the, 
Now, when you look at, so when in the olden days, when they look at such an animal, they say brutish. Brutish means you are not intelligent enough. You are stupid. You are not wise enough. In compared to how we think, you are a brute. Yeah. So David is saying here, a brutish man does not know why. He should be thankful. Why? Because you see, he does not think deep enough. You, because you see, when you see someone who is not grateful, they are easily carried away with present circumstances. They are forgotten where they are coming from. They have even forgotten that you, see, you are complaining about house rent or thinking that they will pack your load outside or you have not paid your children's school fees. Because of that, you are saying that there is nothing to be grateful for. Forgetting the fact that you can have all the money now and one problem will take it away. Oh yeah. Brutish. See, a brutish man does not know this. Why you should always give. That is why the Bible says in everything, give thanks. I'm not saying that you are not going through a very challenging season. I am not saying that the season is palatable. But in the midst of it, if you are not brutish, you will realize that in that situation there is still something to be thankful for. Yeah. Yeah. It takes thoughtfulness to realize that whatever situation you are in is not the worst that can happen to a person. It's not the worst. It's not the, no matter the situation, there is always something to be thankful for. So you see, two signs of ingratitude is that it is when you are not grateful, it's a sign of brutishness. An unthankful person is a brutish person. He's not a deep thinker. Does not think deep enough. An unthankful person, an ungrateful person, is suffers from brutishness. He's a brute. You are not thinking deep enough. That is why you are not thankful. Yes, that is why you are not thankful. And number two, ingratitude is a sign of foolishness. He said, if neither does a fool understand this, it shows the person is not wise. It's not wise. It's not wise. It's not wise. Foolishness. So when you see an unthankful person, you have seen a brutish person. When you see an unthankful person, you have seen a foolish person. Yes. It is foolishness to be unthankful, to be ungrateful. It's totally unwise. You know, there is something called the law of attraction. That is why you see that ungratefulness attracts negative things to people. The law of attraction says... Whatever you focus on, you begin to attract. You attract more of it into our lives. Are you with me? Yes, and what your focus always becomes bigger. That's the other thing. Your focus becomes bigger. What you focus on becomes bigger. Yeah. So the law of attraction is that whatever you focus on, you are trapped. In fact, the way the people in the world say it is that the universe, they, they don't believe in God. So they will say that whatever you begin to focus on, after some time, the universe begins to find a way of sending more of it to you. So for instance now, if you think of buying a Nissan car now, maybe you have a Nissan car in mind, you realize that from that day you make up your mind and you focus on, you have narrowed down on that car. Everywhere you go, you start seeing that car. You start seeing that car. The cars are always better because your mind was not focusing on it. So you there are, a lot of people are using this car. No, they've always been using this car, but because you have not decided on it. All right? Now, the same thing. When the devil wants to weaken a man, one of the things he does is to make one problem and magnify it. So when he wakes up and sits everywhere, he's thinking about that problem. Now, whatever it is, you realize that the problem you focus on and without the habit of the attitude of gratitude only becomes worse. The only way you can make a problem smaller and defeat it is that, yes, the problem is there, but let gratitude be the 
lens with which you view the problem. So in other words, ah, I don't have a job. So what, what can I be? I'll, if I keep staring at this, I will feel that not having a job is the worst thing that can happen to a person. So what do I need to do? I need to put on the lens of thanksgiving in looking at this unemployment in my life. So yes, I want to think about how to get a job, but I need to first wear the lens, the glasses of thanksgiving. How, what, what is it that I can be grateful for in this situation? So you see, that in itself is a game changer. That in, once you wear the lens of thanksgiving to look at that problem, you see that automatically what you begin to attract the, is the solution to that problem. You will, it will come because in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Now, let's quickly look at one point on how to develop an effective thanksgiving life. How to develop an effective thanksgiving life. Now, I use the word life because thanksgiving is, should not be an event. It should be a lifestyle. As I said, I always look at everything from the lens of what? Gratitude. Wear the lens. Yes, everything is not the way it's supposed to be. What can I be thankful for? What can I be thankful for in this situation? You see, whatever you, when you always do that, you see that you are walking in the path of victory already. So, now, how then do you develop an effective Thanksgiving lifestyle? Number one is that you have to be grateful for, in quotes now, little things. Be grateful for little things. Put little things in, put it in bracket or put it in quotes. Put it in quotes. Put a quote there for little things. And there is a reason for it. Luke chapter 19 verse 17 says, And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little, very little, very little, have thou authority over ten cities? Then verse 26 then says, For I say unto you that unto everyone which hath shall be given. And from him that hath not, even that which he hath shall be what? Taken away. Now, when the Bible says unto him that hath shall be given, what does the person have? Little. Remember, he said you have been faithful in very little. Very little. Now, when the Lord used that adjective, he didn't just say little. He said very. That means the thing is like a monster seed. It is even insignificant. But yet, you choose to handle it well. You choose to be grateful. He said, you, because you have been faithful in very little. Now, season of challenges in our lives makes us lose sight of what I call little things. But little things are actually not little. So, for instance, you see that when we are going through difficult season, what happens is that that season appears to be the biggest thing. Then, it becomes the object of our focus. Most people make one mistake during the challenges phase of their life. They lose sight of the most significant thing. The significant and the important thing becomes insignificant because they have abundance of it. You know, um, psychologists call, have two words they use. They call it scarcity mentality or an abundant mentality. So, you are either looking at a situation from either the scarcity mentality or what we call the half full or half empty mentality. It's the same thing, but how are you looking at it? If you are looking with scarcity mentality, it's like, you know, there will be a feeling of insecurity. So, you are always, in fact, um, one of the things that psychologists will always tell you that the, the fear of loss is more palpable than the, 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 uh, the other word is well, what you gain. So, marketers will tell you, for instance, that people make faster decisions when they, when they know what they have to lose than what they have to gain. 
So if, if, you, if you want to sell a phone, for instance, now, one of the things about this mindset is that if you tell somebody, oh, buy this phone, it will help you make better calls. It will help you um, it will have uh, whatever it is. Um, make pictures. Um, you, make, you, take, you can take pictures with this phone, whatever. But go and check when Apple wants to market their phones. They will have to come from that mindset of loss. So they will tell you, iPhone 11 14 Pro Max is the best phone we've made so far. And you see them walk around. You know, iPhone 13 uses the M1 chip, but iPhone 14 Pro Max uses the M2 chip. The resolution, you see, they are trying to tell you what you have to lose. The resolution of iPhone um, 13 Pro Max is, they will measure maybe 7 me megapixels per second, but this one is 15 megapixels per second. So, wow. Then, it, they said, in fact, the battery life of 13 Pro Max and this, you have 300% battery advantage compared to the earlier edition. Wow. You know, what are they trying to let you know? That if in case you don't buy this one, this, then at the end of the day, you that you are actually losing it, using the phone. By the time you go and buy, you realize that you don't you have never even known that all those things are not really useful to you. But because the way it was mentioned, they kept comparing it to the previous generation. That's why you see that they will not just sell a phone to you without actually comparing it to the previous generation. It's a, it's a psychology game. Because they want you to know that the previous generation, they want you to see that you are having something to lose if you don't move to this one. Because the, the moment this one had come out, the older generation becomes useless. So you will see them comparing, comparing, because they know that human being, the fear of loss is more intense than what they stand to, the fear of gain. They, we don't want to lose. That's why sometimes you see that in the old days, if somebody said, I have a bad day. When you say, I have a bad day, you realize that it's just one event that has made the day bad. But the person has forgotten about every other good thing. And that one event spoils the entire day. That one event can spoil the entire day compared to all the other good things. Because you see, it's a scarcity mindset. We think more in the aspect of negativity. We think more in the aspect of what we have to lose than what we have gained. So you see somebody now, 10 things happen in a day. One did not go well. Maybe his clothes was wet. Maybe the, uh, the, the query him at work. Maybe something did not go. That then becomes the only focus of the day. But every other good thing that happened does not matter anymore until he loses it. Until he loses that one, then that's when he will now realize that, ah, even if, if they query me, but thank God, I, I, I still have my job. Thank God for this. Thank God for that. There are nine things to always be thankful for for every one negative thing that happens to you. Nine things. Nine things. Nine things. You have to locate your nine. Yes. Jesus, where are the nine? It's, it's not as bad as you think. It's because that one thing has reorientated your mind in such a way that you have forgotten that there are nine good things that are happening for every one negative thing. Lot out the negative one over nine. Eh? It's diff different from nine over one. Nine over one, I'm passing. So I don't think in the respect of one over nine, I think of nine over one. Yeah. It depends on how you are looking at it. Oh, yeah. it's, it's the same number. But with the one you put first, Helps you to th see things in a different way. Is either you are looking at it one over nine and nine over one. But you see, even though they are the same number, the outcome will be very different. Very different. Very different. Start with what you have. Not what you don't have. Yeah. Start with what you have. Start with what you have. And you will see how gratitude will change your life. Now let's do an exercise. I want you to see what I call little things. Because you see, now, how many of you are believing God for a major breakthrough that will make you very happy this month? We all have something major, right? Okay, so we want to um, do an exercise that will help you get it. Think of that one thing that will make you very grateful. That will make you very happy. Make you very happy. One thing. Are you, have you thought about it? Go. Just think of one thing now. That this month of June will make a whole lot of difference in your life. Okay? It's a non-negotiable one thing, right? 
Maybe it's money. Maybe it's house rent. Maybe it's this. Now, have you conceived your one idea for the month of June? Do you have it right now? So this is what will make your Thanksgiving very big this month, right? Yes, so if God does it for you, will you be very, very grateful? Very grateful. Are you sure? Yes, because God is going to give it to you. Yes, I don't know why some of you are not trusting me. I, I, I just respond. We are not writing exam. I said, this one thing you have, God is going to give it to you. Yes, now, now that you have that one thing in your mind, I want you to do, me a, if, do another exercise. Breathe in. Breathe in. Take all the air from your neighbor's side. Carry all the air inside. Breathe in. Everybody, don't talk. Just let us breathe in. So, are you ready now? No, breathe out first. When I say breathe in, then we all do it together. One, two, ready, go. Now, breathe out. Can we repeat one more time? Breathe in again. Breathe out. Now, if you were able to do that exercise... This exercise I just gave you now. How many of you were able to do it? Okay, so pause. Remember that there is one thing we are believing God for, right? That will make us exceptionally happy this month. Exceptionally grateful. Exceptionally uh, joyful. For the last time, can you breathe in again? With everything from your, with your mouth, with your nose. Breathe in again. Now breathe out. Good. How many of you were able to breathe in and out? Let me tell you what just happened to you. If you are able to breathe in and out like that, it means that you did not have at least eight respiratory diseases that could have killed your life. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you. Number one, you did not have asthma. Number two, you did not have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Number three, you did not have cystic fibrosis. Number four, you did not have emphysema. Number five, you did not have bronchitis. Number six, you did not have pneumonia. Number seven, you did not have tuberculosis. Number eight, you did not have lung cancer. You see, eight disease, just by breathing in like that, means that you did not have those eight diseases now, compare those eight diseases to what you think will have made you happy. Which one will you have had? So, if God asks you to choose between those, that particular thing you think is so big in the month of June, and this eight disease, which one will you prefer? That one or this one? This one or that one? Which one will you want to prefer? God should give you the one thing you want, but give you this eight disease, or... God should keep this eight disease and even take that one thing away. Which one do you think you prefer? Which one do you think we prefer? So that means that one thing that you thought was so big was not actually as big as the breath you breathe in. It's not actually as big. It's not so big compared to the breath you are breathing in. So do you realize that it's, you don't have a problem really? Because imagine that lung cancer is there. No, imagine the presence of lung cancer. And you have not thanked God for, when was the last time you thanked God for breathing in? So that means the reason why you don't have what you are looking for this month is because you are taking the little things for granted. The same way you have handled the air that you are breathing. If God gives you this one thing also, that's how you take it for granted. Because you see, we do not, we have lost sight of the real thing that matters in life. And we are always looking for the new big thing, the new big thing, the new big thing. And the ones that is so big that God has done for us, we have made it as though it is not important anymore. So that's how come we wake up and we say, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Do you see what I mean by brutishness? Not thinking deep enough. Not thinking deep enough. Not thinking deep enough. So when there is the presence of brutes, or a man is brutish, he's always looking for the next big thing, the next house rent, the next car that will make him grateful. But he loses sight of the present one. That, and those ones are now look so small. Because you see, he, is, he has had an abundance of it. He no longer values it. That's why some of us don't even thank God for our family anymore. You complain about the husband. You complain about the children. You complain about this. You complain, and you have lost sight that, you see, even if you have all the money in the world. You see, go and research about lung cancer. That one disease can take away all the investment of a man. It can take away all the investments. Emphysema, tuberculosis, and all those things. So by breathing in, and do you know, do you know something? An average human brain breathes in and out at least 25,000 times in a day. At least 25,000 times in a day. <sighs> And we are used to <sighs> that we've lost sight of ah, this one is a major thing to be thankful for. So today, as a roundup, it is time to become more grateful for the real things of life. It is time not to lose sight and trivialize anything around our life. Every of the blessings of God is major. Is major. Everything that he has done is major. It is a good thing to give thanks. This morning, we, that is what we have come to do as we round up this service. Can we stand to our feet? Can we stand to our feet? The reason why we set aside every first Sunday is to remind ourselves that if the Lord had not built the house, the laborer what? Labor in vain. If the Lord had not watched over the city, the watchman keep it awake, but in vain. Put aside every other thing. And I want you to begin to celebrate again from the depth of your heart as you begin to thank God. You see, nothing else matters right now. Nothing else matters right now. All that matters is that you are before the Lord. And you want to give something to Him. And what is it that you have come to give? A gratitude from a heartfelt heart. Gratitude from the depths of your heart. Look at that situation again from the perspective of gratitude. Put on your lens of gratitude and say, Lord, I refuse to take it for granted. I refuse to take it for granted. I don't know wherever you are this morning, can we lift up our voice? It's a new month. It's the first Sunday of a new month. So wherever you are, I just want you to go ahead and just bless the Lord. Take this one seriously. Take this one seriously. Thank God for every disease that has not neared you. Thank God for every disease he has kept away. Thank God for the perfection of good health. Everywhere you are, we are focusing on thanking God. 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 On thanking God. Do not take it for granted. Do not be brutish about it. 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 Lift your voices and just bless the name of the Lord. 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 Of the Lord. Hey, Lord, I bless your holy name. Robertanda Shiketa Zokoto Maya. Oh, Rabanda Kata. Shele Baba. Shele Baba. Shunt 
Selegasata, Shuntala Gasata, Shuntala Gasata, Koleba Rebataya, Shunto Robodoske, Rabale Gasanto Lebeta, O Rabalata Shetabaya, Ekalosa, Ekalosa, lift your voices today and express deep gratitude to God. You don't have to lose it before you value it. Express great gratitude to God. We bless your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Oh, somebody from the depth of your heart, sing praises to God. From the depth of your heart, sing worship to Him. From the depth of your heart, sing adoration to Him. Wonderful God, glorious God. Mighty God, lover of our soul, keeper of our life, our strength now, our helper, the only true and wise God. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We magnify your name. We glorify you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This beautiful life you've given me, and as you are, you are. So beautiful. so beautiful. Now, how did it make it so beautiful? It's not the car that made it beautiful. It's not the house that made it beautiful. Oh, yes. It's not the job that made it beautiful. Oh, yes. It's not the clothes that made it beautiful. Oh, yes. If all those things were absent, 
is still a beautiful life. Oh yes. Because we know God. God. But you see something. When we don't have the car, we think it's no longer a beautiful life. Ooh. When we don't have the shoe we want, we think it's no longer a beautiful life. Ooh. When we don't have the with the house or the visa, Come we on. think it's no longer a beautiful Come life. On. Maybe we are not able to pay our house rent hey. as I went to you. Hey. We think it's no longer a beautiful house. Oh. Maybe you're not able to pay the school fees. Fire. Then we think it's no longer a beautiful house. Come you on. see, Fire. material things is not what made it a beautiful oh, life. Yes. What made it a beautiful life is that you know God. Oh, yes. You have God. Oh, yes. You are a child of yes, God. Lord. Without that foundation, every other thing becomes useless. Oh, yes. So when we are saying thank you, we have to not lose sight of the fact that you are a child of God. Oh, yes. oh what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world oh. and lose his own soul? Yes. But you know something? When we don't have the world, we think we don't have everything. That we have God, we have everything. That is why you see that I'm recalling that part of that song. You made my life so beautiful. As you are, you have made me here on earth. That in itself is the greatest thing that has happened to me. That I can be a child of God. That I'm called a child of God. That I have a God who loves me. That I have a God who has never condemned me. That I have a God who does not judge me. That I have a God who believes in me. When I fall, he's there to raise me up. That I am not helpless. That I have God as a pillar of my life. Hey brother, don't lose sight of this. Don't hey. lose sight of the God factor in your life. I said, don't lose sight of the God factor in your life. It is everything. For one with God is a majority. So we are going to sing that song. And we are just going to thank God. Because it's all that we have. It's all that we have. You made my life. You made my life so beautiful.
we say, I, I worship you. you in our life. You are God of your name. Come on from the depth of your heart. Say to him, oh, you, you are, are God of your Come on, say, mighty God, we bless your name today. things. I don't want to thank him for car, shoe, money. 
there are a lot of great things that we have lost sight of the sickness is taken away the healing the breath the hearing the seeing the walking the eating the tongue the tasting the feeling these are major things that money cannot buy so lift your voice and at least celebrate 10 great things that you have not thanked him for in recent times at least 10 of them think deeply I want you to overcome brutishness overcome brutishness in your life and be a grateful person by becoming a deep and thoughtful thinker when it comes to thanking God thank him Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. For the respiratory system that are working well. For the digestive system that are working well. Ha. Hey. Hey. That you do not need oppression before the food is digested. Thank him. For the mobility. For the legs, the arteries, for the red blood cells and the white blood cells, for the heart that is pumping the way it ought to pump. Thank Him. Thank Him. That the kidneys and the livers are doing their jobs. Even if you are in in the case they are not working well still thank him thank him for the anus that passes out the feces at, at without any aid any requirement thank him for that thank him for that thank him for the family he has given to you your family may not be the best, but it's still worth thanking God for. A major problem in our family can even affect us. Thank Him. Thank Him for that. Thank Him for that. Thank Him for that. Thank Him for that. Even if you don't have a job, thank Him. That you are qualified to look for a job. Thank him. Don't lose sight of the great things, of the deep things that matters. Never lose sight of them. Don't take it for granted. Thank him. is that he has been the one taking care of you. You know, yesterday night, the Lord chastised me. Since the first subsidy thing, I've been, I've, I've been thinking negatively. Oh, this, that. Then the Lord reminded me that, you see, the same flood that drowned people was the same flood that lifted Noah's ark up. <laughs> is it not the same flood? It's the same flood. It's the same flood, but to some it was a downfall, but to Noah it was a lifting up. And the Lord lifted his amen. So is it that if the fuel remains at 185, is that the thing that will guarantee that I will be rich in life? No, think about it. Then I said, oh, it's the truth. It's the truth. When it was at 96 naira, fuel used to be sold for 87 naira in this country. 
Some, those who are still poor were still poor. And between that time and this time, new billionaires have been raised. They have been raised. So I said to myself, you know, Psalm 121 then came alive. The Lord is my helper. I will lift up my head unto the east, where from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. He said, The sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. He said, It shall preserve. So, no matter what is happening, you and I, you are just going to say, Where? He said, Surely darkness will cover the earth, gross darkness, the people. The Lord never said that this would be always be good in a country but you see what, what it does not matter the state of the nation right god said it will preserve thy soul he said it is the shade upon your right hand so your spending power cannot be affected because the lord is the shade over my own right hand not my salary so lift up your say the lord is the shade upon my right hand so i want you to lift your voice and say my father my god i thank you for the situation in Nigeria because it's always working together for my good. So regardless of what is happening in Nigeria I still acknowledge you as my shepherd. I acknowledge you as my provider. I acknowledge you as my source. The sun shall not smite me by day because of you Lord. Can't you go ahead and just lift your voice and thank him for that. I want you to just say that remove that fear this is your season of blessing. Thank him for the state of things. Because the Lord who is our shepherd, he that watches over us do not sleep nor slumber. Cast out every spirit of fear. I say, it is my season. It's my season. Darkness may cover the earth, draws darkness the people. But the Lord is still arising upon me. The glory of the Lord is still seen upon my life. The Lord is the one that watches over me. He that watches over me do not sleep. He that watches over me do not slumber. The Lord is the one that cares for me. So for this I am eternally grateful. Thank you for this season. Thank you for this new regime. Because all things are always working together for my good. Oh, I declare it again. That all things, all things, all things, all things are working together for my good because God is the one in charge I refuse to be afraid I acknowledge the hand of the Lord that has always kept me through every season and I declare that I am victorious always all things are working together for my good 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 for this I am grateful and I'm thankful I bless you Father God Forever, Lord, be glorified. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah. Oh. for mercy in any area we have been ungrateful. We pray for mercy in any, any area or in every area we have taken your goodness towards us for granted. We pray for mercy in every area we have taken the major significant things of life that we have an abundance of them for granted. And we have allowed scarcity mindset to overcome us. We pray for mercy in every way. We have taken the air we breathe for granted. The ability to use the restroom. 
the ability to have our food digested the families you have given to us the children you have given to us the fathers you have sent to our lives oh yes the mothers you have given to us oh yes the good people you have sent to us thank you lord we thank you and we pray for mercy in every way we have even taken this this season of our life for granted lord in every way our ingratitude have opened the doors for other things that ought not to be happening we pray for mercy we pray for mercy we pray for mercy we pray for mercy oh god in every way we have allowed ingratitude to step into our lives and open the doors and given the enemy an access because ingratitude is a negative seed to sow i pray for every one of us lord those who are watching online and on offline those who are here every seed of ingratitude that is even waiting to flourish or that has already started germinating or that we have started reaping the harvest merciful god we ask for your mercy oh god lord have mercy on us have mercy on us have mercy on us father have mercy on us precious and holy father forgive us forgive us we are sorry we are sorry we are sorry take not your mercy from us renew your mercy over us forgive us for the great things we have taken for granted forgive us for act of negligence forgive us oh God how oh Lord today we repent that we have you even if we don't have the material things forgive us in every way we have taken your presence in our life for granted we have commonized your presence have mercy on us forgive us in every way we don't even say thank you anymore to you forgive us Lord we pray for your mercy in the name of Jesus so Father Lord we pray for grace to be more grateful grace not to lose sight of gratitude even in this month of June forgive us and give us more grace that whatever may be the one thing that may not be working well help us not to lose sight of the nine things that are working well Amen. help us not to lose sight of the nine things that are working well Amen. Lord we thank you whatever that we may be expecting this month even if we don't have it we are still blessed for the blessings that you have blessed us with cannot be compared to the things we are expecting you for, oh, yes. to do for us. Lord, we thank you for everything. Thank you, Lord. Wave your hands and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Can you just say that for 30 seconds? Thank you, Lord. Just wave your hands from the depth of your heart and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Put those hands together for the Lord. You may place the seat. Hallelujah. So this moment, before we close, it is time to honor the Lord with our sustenance. Now let me say this to you. Of a truth, the prices of things are going to go up within the next few weeks. Of a truth, Things will be very, very expensive. But remember, the higher the water went and was drowning people, the higher Noah's ark also went. It is not the level of the water. It is the level of the grace of God. The eyes of the Lord is upon you. I told myself yesterday, I said, this is the season I will honor God more. I said, oh, they've increased the fuel, so I'm increasing my giving. And I want to let you know, because God's word never fails, respond in this season by determining that it is time to increase your what? Because you see, what normal people in the world will do is to say, oh, let me cut my giving. 
Now, that's a man who put his trust in his own strength. But the one who put his trust in the Lord, we say, it is time I will do what? Rather, increase my giving because it is time for my own act to go higher. So what, when you do that, the statement you are making is that some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but I am trusting where? In the Lord. Because you see, this is the season why, you see, if I turn off all this light and I put on one torch, you will know that that torch becomes brighter. Darkness causes light to shine brighter. So, it's a season for you to shine more. That is why you must respond. I'm telling you. I'm not because I want to. Do. No, I'm telling you the right thing to do. Respond by telling you that I will increase my giving to the Lord and honor God more. If you have not been tightened before, I even right now, when you feel as if you need more money, I'm going to tighten more. I'm, if you have been giving a certain amount, make up your mind that now I am increasing my budget in giving. Why? Because it is always more blessed. More blessing. So you open yourself more to blessings when you do that. So we are giving to the Lord. Today we give our tithe. Today we give our offering. And today we also give our thanksgiving offering. Alright? Thanksgiving offering is that which we set aside every first Sunday of the month. To say, Lord, it's another month. Those of you whose birthday falls in this month. Anytime you are doing your birthday, always set a special offering aside to give. I'm telling you. He said, because you are acknowledging that every addition is not you, is God. Hallelujah. Are you ready to honor the Lord with your substance? We are going to do that very quickly. Can we now bring out your tithe, your offering, your thanksgiving offering as we honor the Lord with our substance today? In second service, we are going to be having more room to celebrate the Lord more and more. We are going to be having more room to celebrate the Lord more and more. Glory be to God. Can we stand to our feet? I just want us to stand to our feet. Can we stand? Then when we finish praying, you'll be seated. Now lift up your tithe, your offering, your thanksgiving offering, and say, Lord, I acknowledge with my substance that you are still Lord and King over my life. I acknowledge that you are the shepherd over my finances. I acknowledge you as my Jehovah Jireh. The Lord who always provide for me. I acknowledge that in every circumstances, the Lord is my provider. I acknowledge that it is not my power nor by might, but it is by the Spirit of the Lord that I always have sufficiency in all things. So Lord, be glorified once again as I honor you with my tithe, with my substance, with my offering. Lord, be enthroned, be glorified. Can you do that right now? Can you acknowledge him? Can you go ahead and acknowledge him? Over your finances, acknowledge him. Over your all that you have, acknowledge him. Over your tithes, I bring my tithe before you, Lord. I bring my offering before you, Lord. I appreciate you with this special thanksgiving, Lord. Oh Lord, I be glorified. I acknowledge you as my source that never runs dry. Oh, the Lord is the shade upon my right hand. I acknowledge that the sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. I acknowledge that the Lord is the Lord, is the, is the one who watches over me in all season. Father, I acknowledge you. We acknowledge you, Lord. We acknowledge you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. So, Lord, we thank you once again this first Sunday. And we've come to say thank you for everything. Our great provider, we thank you because you do not sleep nor slumber. And those who trust in the Lord cannot know shame. So Lord, we acknowledge you with our tithe, with our substance, with our offering, with our thanksgiving offering. And we say thank you for everything. And we declare, Lord, in this season that your blessing is flowing towards us the more. Oh, we thank you because the sun shall not smite us by day. Nor the moon by night. The hardship in the land shall not smite us. Because the Lord is the one that watches over us. Your banner over us is love. So we thank you because this is our season of abundance. It's our season of increase. It's our season of building houses. It's our season of prosperity. Because heaven is always supplying our needs. In Jesus' name we are praying. Somebody shout a louder amen. 
You may please be seated. Can the offering basket go round? And uh, those of you who are giving online, I want you to go ahead and also do that as we acknowledge the Lord greatly. Amen, amen. Now, before we close this service, I just want to have one major announcement. Every other announcement will be made in the second service because second service, we are going to be having more room to celebrate and to say thank you to the Lord. Now, what is this announcement? This coming Saturday by 10 a.m. is going to be our career compass. Amen. Can I have the career compass flyers? Fantastic. Now, career compass, you know, let me tell you why it's so important. Recently, I had to do some recruitment in my office. And we shortlisted quite a number of candidates uh, online. Now, as, as we interview these people, these candidates, I remember one of them that came. I even said, uh, hello, sir, please sit there. He said, no, I'm not a sir. I'm a girl. No. no. Now, for me, the interviewer, to even look at you a girl and think you are a man, it tells you how she dressed for that interview. She was a girl. She wore jeans. She wore a shirt. No hearing. She bobbed her hair and everything. I'm serious. And she came for an interview. I, 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 I spoke to another one. Uh, and you could see that as she was talking, she was like, you know, <laughs> you know. And I said, so I asked, which church do you attend? I shall know that I cannot be Royal Grace Chapel. <laughs> Just kidding. You need to prepare yourself for the kind of job you are looking for. Some of you, you have finished secondary school, you are writing your work and your neck now. I spent seven extra years chasing after medicine. Because as a science student, that's what we were told. Medicine, pharmacy, and the rest. And um, it was after seven years that I began to now try to go and do law. So I, I, have, I have two YX certificates. I went back to go and do YX again. So after all the YX I filled, I have science, YX for science. I have YX for hearts. I went back to go and do government, law. history, yes history and the rest because I wanted to go and do law because somebody looked at me and said because I talk too much I think you should go and study law and I believe the person see so you can see for about 8 to 10 years what, how my O level and A level life was scattered because I had no guidance I was following what people are saying this is what career compass is all about there are two people that will be addressed on Saturday those of you who are students, especially you are finishing your SS3 and um, you are just finishing. And those of you, even if you have a job right now, but you should be able to know how to move to the next level. How to, where are they looking for candidates? Are you in that place that candidates are getting? Do you have what it takes now? What should you do right now so that you can get a better job to upscale yourself to do all those things? We want to really teach you. We don't want to leave it for granted. So, uh, we, we don't want to take it for granted, I mean. So, um... So Saturday by 10 a.m., our, our dear sister that, um, please bring a picture of, I call her ABB, amazing, then I will not tell you the rest. All right, so, okay, so she's, she's a specialist in that area. God has blessed us with this wonderful woman, all right, because recently she even, she even what I used to pay Jobber Man for to go and do, and those ones we I, I do and send me a lot of things. Uh, you know, I, I had to engage her services. And within two weeks, she was able to sort everything out for me. I'm telling you, back to back. I'm, so I'm, I'm not lying. I'm, I, I pay, I mean, I use, often think that Jobber Man is the blessed platform. She did it within two weeks and sorted all the things well for me. I said, wow, what a blessing to have her around. All right. So Saturday, 10 a.m., all right, 10 a.m., Okay, do not miss it. Okay, do not miss it. 10 a.m., do not miss it. Make sure you are there. Um, are we going to be doing Zoom? I cannot guarantee you because she's going to be doing some practical training. We really want you to be there by 10 a.m. That is the announcement I have. And um, every other announcement will be made in the second service because today is going to be a great day because they are telling me that my time is up already, so I need to leave this point. But however... If you, today is your first Sunday here, um, you, you, you know that you are not waiting for second service. Uh, 
But if you are waiting for second service, don't acknowledge it because second service, we have something special also for you. But if you know you are on your way out and you don't want to miss the package we have for you, if today is your first Sunday here, can you just wave your hands to me? Your first time here, wave your hand. Oh, there is somebody there. Please clap for him. Please celebrate. And those of you who have joined online, we we'll welcome you. Oh, please shake them for me. Welcome, sirs. Welcome, sirs. Well, oh, can somebody please say, oh, celebrate these wonderful people. And for our venture, you joined online too. We want to welcome you for today's service. Um, the, our team are going to be ushering you for his, uh, your reception under the canopy to just interact with you, to talk with you, and um, to engage with you. So um, they are going to be giving you a card right now. When you have that card, please um, fill it. Then under the canopy, we'll be waiting for you. But I want to quickly pray for you. Can you please stand to your face if today is your first time? I want to just quickly pray for you. Can I, pray, can I just pray for you? Father, I thank you for all these wonderful people that, are, that have come here today. We, I bless you that the Lord will deliver your own testimonies to you. I declare over your life that stepping here will mark a turnaround blessing for you in the name of Jesus. May your blessing be greatly increased. And may the Lord prosper you more and more. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Shout it louder. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, I'm, amazing welcome team. Where are you? Well, the welcome team. Do you? Do, do, okay, so we want to take them. Okay, please. We want to quickly take you under the, re, for our reception, under the canopy. Please, can you pick your bag, your belongings as they take you for the reception? Can we please clap for them as they go for their reception? God bless you greatly. Oh, please keep clapping for them. Ushers, can you please pay attention and well, help us receive them out? All right. Amen, amen. So what time is um, Career Compass on Saturday? 10 a.m. Now, from Monday, we are now moving to the new path of Rise to Glory. Amen. From tomorrow, Rise to Glory will now be on Zoom. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then and Friday. Only on Thursday are we going to be doing the YouTube broadcast. Now, do you know what we are doing this? So you don't need to come. You can come to church. There are people who will be praying in church also. Join them. But we want your house to become the place of prayer. We want you to start joining whilst you are also at, at your workplace, at your business place. And I want to see you praying. In fact, the reason for this, one of the major reasons, is we want to see ourselves. Because when we see you every morning praying, we will be able to see uh, pray directly over you. Then number two, that we are raising new leaders to be able to do this more. So we are not streaming it to YouTube. Only on Thursday when you see. So you see that from Monday, you will see new set of leaders, you know, praying. And by the time we do the teaching this month, you will understand why we have done that more. So don't miss Rise to Glory from tomorrow. Can we stand to our feet? And um, I, those of you who are born in the month of June, I'm going to be praying for you more in the second service if June is your birthday. All right, but I'm just going to pray for you briefly. Now lift up your hand. Father, thank you that we can lift our hands again in this month of June. It's an honor and a privilege. As we go forward, we thank you because your mighty hand is upon us. And this month, we receive more grace to walk in gratitude. As we proceed into the second service, I thank you for all those whose birthday fell in this month of June. That this is not the end of their birthday. That your joy will multiply greatly towards them. They will experience a new dimension of your increase in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Now I release you into the blessing of the Lord this week. That it shall be a glorious week for you. Even in the midst of the situation in Nigeria, you are going to experience a lifting up. I declare that your gratitude will only increase. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Amen. Shout a louder amen. amen. Let's take our confession of faith one to go. I'm a royal. I enjoy the best. I'm a child of the king. I can never be defeated. Lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. Our swearing I confession of faith. The spirit of the Lord is at work in my life. I'm swearing I am doing great things for the Lord. Now turn to your neighbor and say, be more grateful. Don't take little things for granted. Make a new friend. Ask for somebody's name. Ask for their baby's name. Find out. Second service will start exactly in three minutes. God bless you.